In mechanical ventilation, a respiratory cycle refers to one complete cycle of breathing delivered by the ventilator, consisting of inspiratory and expiratory phases. Let's illustrate this one a pressure time waveform. During the inspiration phase, the ventilator delivers a set volume or pressure of air into the lungs. In the expiration phase, the lungs passively release the air as the ventilator stops delivering pressure, allowing exhalation. The phases can be appreciated on other waveform and loops too. Some ventilators also include a brief pause phase between inspiration and expiration, known as the inspiratory hold, which helps assess lung mechanics such as compliance and plateau pressure. The time of a respiratory cycle refers to the total duration of one complete breath, including both inspiration and expiration. It is determined by the respiratory rate and expressed as the total cycle time. For example, if the respiratory rate is 12 breaths per minute, the total cycle time would be 5 seconds per breath. This total cycle time is divided into inspiratory time and expiratory time. Inspiratory time is the duration of the inspiratory phase and expiratory time is the time left for passive exhalation after inspiration. The ratio of inspiratory time to expiratory time is called IE ratio and is commonly set at 1 is to 2 or 1 is to 3 to allow sufficient time for exhalation. Using the same example with a total cycle time of 5 seconds and an IE ratio of 1 to 3, the inspiratory time is 1.25 seconds, and the expiratory time is 3.75 seconds. Depending on the mode of ventilation, inspiratory time is set through various methods though respiratory rate determines the overall breath cycle time. Let's start with volume control mode. Volume controlled ventilation is a mode of mechanical ventilation in which the ventilator delivers a preset constant tidal volume to the patient during each breath. Since the ventilator delivers a fixed tidal volume, the inspiratory time depends on how fast or slow that volume is delivered by a certain amount of flow rate. To quantify the relationship between flow rate, tidal volume and inspiratory time, we use this formula. Flow rate is the speed at which the ventilator delivers the air into the lungs. When the flow rate is increased, the ventilator delivers the tidal volume more quickly, which means that the inspiratory phase is shorter. In contrast, when the flow rate is decreased, the ventilator delivers the same tidal volume more slowly, increasing the eye time. As an example, for a tidal volume of 0.5 liters at a flow rate of 60 liters per min, the inspiratory time is 0.5 seconds, while at a flow rate of 30 liters per min, the eye time increases to 1 second. Tidal volume is the total volume of air delivered during inspiration. While the tidal volume is set, its impact on eye time comes into play indirectly when adjusting the flow rate. Larger tidal volumes require more time to deliver if the flow rate remains constant. For example, a tidal volume of 0.7 liters at 30 liters per minute results in an inspiratory time of 1.4 seconds, while a tidal volume of 0.3 liters at 30 liters per minute results in an inspiratory time of 0.6 seconds. In volume-controlled ventilation, we typically don't set the IE ratio directly. Instead, the IE ratio is determined indirectly by adjusting tidal volume, flow rate and respiratory rate. Since eye time is determined by tidal volume and flow rate, the expiratory time is calculated based on the total cycle time. Thus, while volume control ventilation does not allow direct IE ratio setting, you can adjust flow rate, tidal volume or respiratory rate to achieve the desired ratio. Some modern ventilators may display the IE ratio as a guide when adjusting these settings. Pressure control ventilation is a mode of mechanical ventilation where the ventilator delivers breaths at a set pressure. 
The main goal is to ensure that the pressure remains constant during the inspiratory phase of each breath regardless of the volume of air delivered. To achieve this, the ventilator adjusts the flow of air to reach the set pressure. The clinician sets the pressure that will be delivered as well as the inspiratory time. Flow rate and tidal volume is not used to determine inspiratory time because it is not constant and will lead to inconsistent inspiratory time. The respiratory rate is also set but it doesn't directly control the inspiratory time as it is set by the clinician. The expiratory time however is completely dependent on respiratory rate. As we have seen, respiratory rate determines the total cycle time and thus influences the expiratory time. If the total cycle time is low, expiratory time also reduces as inspiratory time is fixed by clinicians. Thus, IE ratio in pressure control ventilation is determined by inspiratory time and respiratory rate. Here is a big table of how inspiratory time, expiratory time and IE ratio is determined in other modes of ventilation. If we understand volume control and pressure control ventilation, we can directly determine I time, E time, and the IE ratio in other modes since they follow the same fundamental principles. In any mode with mandatory breaths, such as assist control volume control, assist control pressure control, and synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation, these parameters are set similarly, either indirectly through flow rate and tidal volume in volume control-based modes or directly through inspiratory time in pressure control-based modes. The main difference comes from patient-triggered breaths, which can alter the overall respiratory rate. In spontaneous modes like pressure support ventilation there are no set mandatory breaths, so inspiratory time and expiratory time are entirely dependent on the patient's effort, making the inspiratory to expiratory ratio variable. Take Setting appropriate inspiratory time, expiratory time and inspiratory to expiratory ratio need adjustment based on the patient's specific respiratory conditions. Longer inspiratory allows for a more complete filling of the lungs enhancing oxygenation while adequate expiratory time ensures complete exhalation facilitating the removal of carbon dioxide from the lungs. The IE ratio is strongly influenced by inspiratory time but must be adjusted to ensure adequate expiratory time. Let's look at how to set them in ARDS. In ARDS, where hypoxemia is a major concern, the goal is to enhance alveolar recruitment while minimizing ventilator-induced lung injury. Prolonging inspiratory time in ARDS enhances lung recruitment by allowing more time for alveoli to fill with air. A longer inspiratory time also increases mean airway pressure which is the average pressure applied to the airways throughout the respiratory cycle. The increased mean airway pressure improves oxygenation by keeping alveoli open longer. Lastly, increasing inspiratory time reduces peak inspiratory pressure reducing the risk of barotrauma. Due to the increased inspiratory time, expiratory time is shortened to maintain the respiratory cycle. With shortened expiratory time, Incomplete exhalation can lead to breath stacking and dynamic hyperinflation. Reducing respiratory rate in such cases can increase total cycle time allowing more time for exhalation. Continuous monitoring of flow waveforms, auto peep levels and end tidal CO2 helps detect inadequate exhalation and the need for further adjustments. In ARDS, the IE ratio is often set to 1 to 1, deviating away from the normal ratio of 1 to 2 or 3. An inverse ratio like 2 to 1 is also used to improve oxygenation in severe hypoxemia. However, an inverse IE ratio means that expiration is significantly shortened, increasing the risk of breath stacking, dynamic hyperinflation, and auto-peep. 
In obstructive lung diseases, the goal is to allow sufficient expiratory flow to counteract increased airway resistance. This ensures effective carbon dioxide elimination and prevents air trapping and dynamic hyperinflation. Inspiratory time is shortened to allow for prolonged expiration, while expiratory time is extended to facilitate full exhalation. The IE ratio is typically set between 1 to 3 and 1 to 5 to accommodate slow expiratory flow in cases of severe airway obstruction. However, shorter inspiratory times may reduce tidal volume, requiring adjustments to the ventilation mode or settings to maintain adequate minute ventilation.